This video was brought to you by Technically Not a Technician. In today's video we'll show you everything you need to set up and play Quake Arcade Tournament Edition on your Windows 10 computer. For those of you that are unfamiliar with this arcade game, it's just what it sounds like, an arcade version of the very popular ID software classic, Quake, from 1996. This is a very rare arcade cabinet with only 20 and no to have been built. This cabinet was also offered as a conversion kit, and these conversion cabinets seem to be in the wild more often than the purpose-built cabinets. Regardless, I was very happy to learn that a Quake CHD file existed on MAME, and that I may be able to get the arcade software running on a modern computer. With that said let's move over to my computer and get started. As I do that please remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share this video with a friend. It really helps the channel grow. First, I want to make sure and give credit to Mills5, for the Quake decrypted executable. In short the folks at ID Software required a USB key to be plugged into the cabinet for the software to work, and Mills5 found a way around that. Please be sure to check out Mills5's GitHub page. After checking out all the info and looking at what seemed to be incomplete installation instructions, I figured I'd give my hand a try at getting this working, as we the arcade community seem to have all the needed information to make the software work. As far as the instructions go, all we are told is to place the executable in the root folder, and some helpful suggestions on troubleshooting if you run into any similar issues to the ones listed. This next part I'm not sure is needed, but it is suggested by Mills5 so I'm going to make use of it. I'm going to install nGlide, and copy over the three files that Mills5 recommends placing next to the Quake executable. As you can see I'm going to place a folder in the root of my drive and I'm going to name it Quake. We'll be using this folder as our root folder, and we will place everything we need inside of it. The next thing we'll wish to do is download the modified Quake executable files. The needed files will come as a zip file. We'll simply download them, and extract them to our root folder. Now we'll need the Quake files that are found on the original arcade cabinet. Believe it or not, but, you can find the original arcade image in the form of a CHD file, in MAME. Because of this our next step is to head over to MAME, look at our ROMs folder, and find the Quake CHD. We'll then copy the CHD to our root folder, however, we'll still need to extract the Quake files from the CHD file. We'll be using the CHD man to extract our needed files from our CHD file. For those of you who are unfamiliar with these files or program CHD man comes with main and CHD files are large image files, like a laser disc, a hard disc or a CD or DVD. As you can see my CHD man has a few batch files included in the zip. I'm going to use the batch file for extracting the information, however, I will be making two changes to the batch file I'm using. One. I will be telling the unit that this CHD is from a hard disk, and the second item, I'll tell the program to extract it as an ISO file. To do this we simply change the .cue to .iso, and we also change the extract CD to extract HD. Make sure you save your batch file after you've made the needed changes to it. After you've saved your changes, start the batch file. The extraction process will begin, and you can see its progress in the terminal window. Yeah. 
Next, we'll use 7-zip to open the .iso file from the hard drive of the Quake Arcade, and we'll then locate the Quake folder inside the .iso file. Once we've found the folder we'll copy all of the information inside the Quake folder from the Quake Arcade, to the Quake folder I have on the root of my computer's hard drive. If we have a fast look around, you can see everything that was on the hard drive of the Quake Arcade cabinets. Really seems to just be the standard computer from 1996. You can now delete all the files that were used to extract the .chd files, you can delete the .chd file, and the .iso files can also be removed. I didn't as I was excited, and wanted to play. We now have all the software in place, however we're going to need to edit some of the config files so that the system doesn't crash every time we start it, and the first config file we're going to edit is one recommended being edited on Mills5's GitHub page and recommended being done by user Warson. We'll use a text edit to block out the video tasks in the quake.rc file. I may play with these files to see if I can get these arcade related videos working as intended, but for right now I'll just cut them out of the instructions so we can move forward without the videos playing so the unit doesn't crash. Once all of the .avi videos have been blocked off, the arcade software should load, and from the reading I've done, the game is playable as it is, however, it is only playable via some save files that have been left behind from the original hard disk. I'm going to load the arcade software and give you some gameplay. I'll say that I did bind the keyboard off camera to save time, it turns out that some of these PC-based arcade cabinets have a keyboard and mouse or at least a connection for one. Because of the kind of game, and its background this cabinet was very easy to transfer the control panel over to the keyboard. If you look at the verbiage that's being displayed by the arcade cabinet you'll see that the software is asking us to get an attendant to assist us as there is an issue. This issue it's reporting is a game control interface or GCI issue. This issue is present as the arcade's game controller isn't present, only my keyboard. I believe I've found a way to disable the GCI, however, the game still doesn't seem to load when firing as intended. In conclusion, this arcade version of Quake can be played on your modern PC, and with a little work I believe I can make this run as intended on an arcade cabinet with a little configuring of the software. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and found it informative. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share with a friend. It really helps the channel grow, and helps me bring you more content.